repeat last time's class and hope that the gods are kind of the same <coughs> okay so as i was saying i'll briefly outline what we did uh, up to now in the class we did the samhita upasanas in anuvaka 3 in anuvaka anuvaka 4 we saw some comments on japa and homam in anuvaka 5 we did the viharati upasanas Vyarati is being Bhu, Bhava, Savaha, and Mahaha. And then they were among these Upasanas, we saw Adi Loka, Adi Daiva, Adi Veda, and Adi Prana Upasana. So four into four, 16 Upasanas we have seen. Then we were looking at Anuvaka 6, and we saw the Hiranyagarbha Upasana. Even in, in, incidentally, in Anvaka 5, we saw the Hiranyagarbha being invoked on an object outside us. And in Anvaka 6, we were seeing Hiranyagarbha being invoked in our own minds. So, Antarhaday, it was there, right? And we said that all this discussion was relevant to Chapter 8 of the Bhagavad Gita, which is Kramamukti was being discussed. The travel of the Jiva through Sushmana Nadi, etc. was being discussed. Now we look at the rest of the Anuvaka, that is Anuvaka number 6. For those who of, of us who are looking at the Mantra Pushpam, we are look, going to start on page number 20. And uh, Arvind, I think you are looking at Mantra Pushpam, right? Yes, Raviji. So page number 20, the first line, Bhurityagnaho Pratitishthati, from there up till Yogyo Pasvaha. Yes. Om Bhurit Yagnao Pratitishthati Bhuva Iti Vayao Suva Arvind, you are uh, muted suddenly. Yes. Bhurit Yagnao Pratitishthati Bhuva Iti Vayao Suva Ritya Ditya Maha Iti Brahmani Apno tisvara ajyam, apno timana saspatim, vakpatish chakshushpatihi, shrotra patir vignana patihi, etatato bhavati, akasha shari rambramha, satyatma pranara mammana anandam. Shanti samridha mamritam mm, iti prachina yogyopa asva. Oh, thank you. So, this portion is talking about what happens to the Hiranyagarbha Upasaka after Maranam, after the death of his physical body. What has happened? And we should recall that he has left through the uh, Brahmaranda, so the uh, Shushup, the, the Nadi he has left and he is travelling through Shuklagatihi. Then what happens is being discussed in this line. So, Bhu, Hu, Iti, Agnau, Prati, Ishtati. The Upasaka merges with the Agnau, with the Agnadevata and the Bhu who represents the Vyarati, the Bhu Vyarati on which the Agnadevata has been invoked. So, this Upasaka, after traveling through Shuklagati, he is merging with the Agni Devata. And we should recall that Agni Devata presides over which loka? Bhu loka. And in his commentary, Shankara says that the word Pratitishthati, 
has to be understood as uh, pervading the entire Bhuloka. So when he says Pratitishthati, the Upasaka is in the form of Agni Devata and he is presiding over the entire Bhuloka. Then the next one is Bhuva Iti Vayoho. And here again the verb is missing. So we have to supply Pratitishthati. Again, the meaning is the same. He now merges with the Vayu Devata who has been invoked on the Bhuva Vyaratihi. The Bhuva Vyaratihi represents the Antariksha Loka which is presided over by Vayu Devata. Then Suvar Ityaditye. So Suvaha Loka. He becomes one with the Surya Devata. Here also the verb has to be supplied Prati Tishthati. Remember these three, Agni, Vayu and Surya, they are all Anga Devatas. They are the subsidiary Devatas and that is why next when Maha comes, so you have to recall the previous Upasana. On the Bhur Bhuvaswaha, we are invoking the subsidiary Devatas, the Anga Devatas and on the Mahavyarati, we are invoking the Angi. Angi is Hiranyagarbhayar. And therefore he says, Maha Iti Brahmani. And having first merged, having first merged with Agni, then with Vayu, then with Surya, this Upasaka finally Maha Iti Brahmani. So he merges with Hiranya Garbha. He merges with the Angi Devata. And that is why the fourth Viharati Maha is being used here. And because, and Shankara adds in his commentary, because the Viharatis are being used, in this, in this Upasana also, which is the sixth Anuvaka. And there, therefore, it has to be connected to the fifth Anuvaka, where the same Viharatis are being, were being used. And therefore, we say that the fifth and sixth Anuvaka should be clubbed as one single Upasana. And of course, we know that Maha represents Hiranyagarbhaya. Hiranyagarbha means what? Saguna Brahman. So, this Upasaka has finally merged into Saguna Brahman, into Hiranyagarbha, into Lord Brahmaji. And this Hiranyagarbha is the Lord of the Brahma Loka, Brahma Loka Adipati. And therefore he says, Apnoti Swarajyam. Swarajyam is overlordship. And overlordship over what? Shankara says he attains overlordship over all the 14 Lokas. For a very simple reason, why Hiranyagarbha pervades all the 14, 14 lokas, and therefore this person, this Upasaka, becomes the master entirely. He becomes the creator himself. And therefore, what happens? He has control over all the devatas. And now all the devatas they offer oblations to the Upasaka. Right? Like the Anga Devatas who offer oblations to the Angi Hiranyagarbha. And that is why he says, Apnoti Swarajyam. And again, we should remember that Hiranyagarbha is the subtle body of the universe now. Samashti Sukshu Sariram. And therefore only, Apnoti Manaspatim. Manaspatim. He acquires the overlordship over the minds of all jivas. Sarvesham hi manasam patihi. Manaspatim is Sarvesham Himanasam Patihi, Lord of all the minds. Why is that so? Because Hiranyagarbha is Samashti mind itself, Samashti Sukshma Shariram. There is no Samashti which is different from the Vyashti. It is only the totality of all the Vyashtis which give us the Samashti. The totality of all the micros, they give us the macro. And therefore, Shankara in his commentary says, this Hiranyagarbha, he uses the, Vyashti, the several Vyashti minds, the multiple Vyashti minds, he uses it as one. That Samashti mind is nothing but the totality of all the Vyashti minds. And Hiranyagarbha therefore has no mind of its own. We should always remember that whenever we talk about the Samashti, the Samashti is nothing but a totality of the Vyashti. Just like the forest does not exist independently of the trees, right? The water does not exist independently of the drops. 
similarly the samashti hiranyagarbha has no existence separately from the multiplicity of various sukshma sharirum then not not only that vakpatish chakshushpatihi vak is representative of karmendriyas chakshu is a representative upalakshanam for jnanendriyas and therefore vakpatish chakshushpatihi he is the patihi the lord of all the karmendriyas and the lord of all the jnanendriyas again i will remind that brahma ji here hiranyagarbha is saguna hiranyagarbha saguna brahman and not nirguna brahman we have to again and again remind ourselves because we will find that the upanishad doesn't distinguish it uses the word brahman and therefore we should always remember the context what is the context here it is the upasana therefore it is saguna hiranyagarbha upasana and then etat tato bhavati etat etat tato something else he becomes not only does he become this does it does it does it become one with saguna hiranyagarbha he gets some other descriptions also and therefore akasha sharira brahma and as we discussed in the last class of course the very disturbed class there are two meanings for this one is the one who has the akasha as his body so akasha shariram brahma means that brahman has akasha for his body and yes and we asked a question in the last class which was answered akasha is thula prapancha it is the gross universe it is a gross element and therefore when you use the word hiran when you use the phrase hiranyagarbha has akasha as body then you are saying that hiranyagarbha is to be taken as virat because akasha is gross body is pancha mahabhuta but thula pancha mahabhuta and therefore that is one interpretation which can be given here that this hiranyagarbha is being identified with virat also there is a alternative explanation which shankara shankaracharya gives he says akashavat sukshma shariram asti this body of hiranyagarbha is sukshma very very subtle like akasha what is akasha akasha is all pervading and because hiranyagarbha is all pervading he can be said to have a body as subtle as sukshma as akasha is and shankara again in his commentary shankara reminds this is prakritam brahma he says because the word prakritam means prakriti so saguna sagunam brahman he says this hiranyagarbha it should not be forgotten that we are talking about hiranyagarbha who is saguna brahman lord brahma ji not nirguna brahman okay the next phrase is satya atma pranaramam mana anandam that phrase we'll take up now that part of the mantra satya atma pranaramam mana anandam the first shankara gives two meanings again the first meaning is pulled out from bhradaranika upanishad from a particular chapter a chapter is called brahmanam over there pra prapta brahmanam called the murta murta brahmanam so there he says shankara draws his meaning from that upanishad and he says sat means the visible elements murta prapancha what are the visible elements what are the visible elements what's so difficult there are five elements earth rashi water fire prithvi jalam agni okay so that is sat sat means murta prapancha sat means the vyakta pancha bahabhutani so jalam agni prithvi and tyat tyat means the amurta prapancha the avyakta pancha mahabhutani which is vayu and akasha and therefore satyam has to be taken as a break up of sat plus tyat which basically means murta prapancha plus amurta prapancha and therefore 
the body of Hiranya Garbha as Murta Murtam Prapancha as his body. Which means what? It has got the visible elements as well as the invisible elements as his body. Body is ultimately composed of Pancha Mahabhutani. Three are visible, two are invisible. Which just means that this body of Hiranya Garbha has both the constituents. This is the first meaning of Satya Atma. Okay. Then there is a second meaning in which he says the Satyam can be taken as uh, the true or the real and Atma can be taken as the nature. So, Satya Atma means the true nature of Saguna Brahman. The true nature of Hiranyagarbha, what is that? What is the true nature of Hiranyagarbha? Satchit Anand. In other words? Nirguna Brahman. Nirguna Brahman. So the true nature of Saguna Brahman is nothing but Nirguna Brahman. That is the second meaning. Okay. So remember the first meaning. The body is made up of five elements. Is from... Which reality? Vyavaharika or Paramarthika? Vyavaharika. The first meaning of Murta Murta Prapancha is from the meaning, is from the Drishti, Vyavaharika Drishti, from the viewpoint of the relational world, transactional world, right? And the second one, which is saying that the true nature of Saguna Brahman is Nirugana Brahman, that is Paramarthika Drishti. So that one phrase, Satyatma, contains two meanings for Brahman. One is from Vyavaharika Drishti, one is from Paramarthika Drishti. I hope that is clear. Any doubts so far? We are in Taitri Upanishad. One needs to, you know, keep revising again and again. Okay, now we look at the next portion, Prana Ramam Mana Anandam. So again, there are two meanings for this. In the first meaning, Prana is the sense organs and as you can also include sense objects there. And Aram, Aram basically means the playground, recreation ground. So, prana ramam is basically praneshu aramanam, that recreation ground, that playground in which the sense organs play with the sense objects. And therefore, the recreation ground for Hiranyagarbha is what is all the sense objects and all the sense organs of all the jivas. And that is called Prana Rama Mahajar. That is one meaning. That the recreation, the playground for Hiranyagarbha is what? The sense objects and the sense organs of all the jivas. And there is another meaning. You have to add the word Yasmin. Yasmin means because of. Because of Yasmin Hiranyagarbha, because of that Hiranyagarbha, Prananam Aramaha. Because of that Hiranyagarbha, all the sense organs of all the jivas have the capacity to enjoy the sense objects. Right? The final meaning of the second meaning is Hiranyagarbha is that principle because of which your sense organs are able to enjoy sense objects. So there are two meanings. One is Hiranyagarbha is the playground itself. The other is Hiranyagarbha is that principle because of which the jiva is able to enjoy sense objects. Okay. Then, Mana Anandam. Hiranyagarbha is that principle for which the source of happiness is what? The Samashti mind, right? So, Hiranyagarbha, the, the happiness available to any mind 
is essentially the samashti mind. And therefore, Hiranyagarbha is the total ananda obtaining in all the minds. This is a fairly simpler meaning. Mana ananda means the totality of all the happiness which is available in all the individual minds that is called Hiranyagarbha. Which means Hiranyagarbha is identified with the total mind and therefore he has total happiness. So, Samashti Tukham is there in Hiranyagarbha because Hiranyagarbha is the totality of all the minds. Which is what is meant by saying that he is identified with all the total mind. Now, there should be a question. Every mind, every individual mind, what else is there in the mind apart from happiness? It should be a very obvious question. When you say Hiranyagarbha is totality of all minds, what does it mean? All the vrittis in all the minds. All the vrittis in all the minds. Now, vrittis can be of two types. One is happy vrittis and one is sad vrittis. Do you agree? Mm, yes. And if therefore Hiranyagarbha is totality of all the minds, is it not correct to say that just as Hiranyagarbha is the totality of all happiness, mana anandam, the similarly, the totality of all the sorrow in all the minds must also find their way into Hiranyagarbha. So, Hiranyagarbha should also be, you know, very, very sad at times. Is that a correct meaning? No, because he is not attached, kind of. You know, um, but Arunaji was just simply saying that he is the totality of all minds, and therefore, okay, yeah. every every vritti should be reflected as a samashti part of it. The micro added together is the macro, and therefore, is not Hiranyagarbha a very sad person? Also, is the question, and the answer is no. Because unlike the individual mind, Hiranyagarbha has extraordinary punyam. Now, how do you say Hiranyagarbha has extraordinary punyam? Do you remember what uh, Yamraj said in Katho Upanishad? How did he become Yamraj? Come on, guys. Cut off Upanishad, we did nicely. How did Yamraj become Yamraj? Was he born as Yamraj? No, through extraordinary punyam only. Punyam. punyam. Through a lot upasana. of good, exactly. Through a lot of good karma, a lot of upasana, he acquired so much punyam that he became Yamraj. Remember that Hiranyagarbha is no different. Hiranyagarbha is also. One of those roles which a jiva plays, providing he has sufficient punyam. And therefore, since Hiranyagarbha is at the very top of the pyramid, right, there are a lot of devatas in the middle, and Hiranyagarbha is the very top of the pyramid, he is the creator. And therefore, when a person reaches that stage, he must have got huge amount of punyam. And that is the only reason that he can become Hiranyagarbha. And therefore, that jiva who has become Hiranyagarbha, has got extraordinarily large amounts of punyam and because of that punyam, the sorrow of the individual minds that cannot touch Hiranyagarbha. That is why he says Mana Anandam. Okay. Then Shanti Samriddham Amritam. So Shanti is uh, peace. Upashamaha it is called. Upashamaha is a word which you will come across in Mandukya Upanishad very often. So right now just remember Upasamaha means the peace. Shanti he is peace. Samriddham means prosperity. And therefore, Shanti Samriddham, Hiranyagarbha is the very embodiment of peace and prosperity. Shanti is peace. Samriddham is prosperity. Therefore, Hiranyagarbha is extraordinary peace and extraordinary prosperity. Also, you can take it another meaning. For him, Shanti is Samridham. 
Okay, one is that Shanti and Samriddham are there. Peace and prosperity is there. That is one meaning of this particular phrase, particular part of the mantra. The other meaning is Shanti Samriddham. Shanti itself is the Samriddham. The peace itself is the wealth of Hiranyagarbha, which means he has an abundance, a totality of peace, a peace in infinite measure, infinite measure he has. Therefore, Shanti Samriddham. Samriddham, the, the wealth that he has consists of peace itself. And that is why it is called Shanti Samriddham. Then, Iti Prachira Yogya Pasvaha. So, he, this is actually a form of address. He Prachina Yogya. So, this is the Guru addressing the Shishya. He Prachina Yogya. The name that the Shishya has been given by the Guru is He Prachina Yogya. And Shankara does not comment upon Prachina Yogya. That is why we take it as that it could be the name of the Shishya. Okay, that is one interpretation. But some other commentators, sub-commentators, they say you should look upon this as hey, Prachina Yogya as Prachina Vidya Yogya. What would that mean? When you add the word Prachina Vidya Yogya, what meaning can you give to that phrase? The ancient knowledge. Okay. Then? The one who is elevated toward this ancient knowledge. Yes, Meza, can you repeat that? The one who is fit for the Prachina Vidya, which is basically Brahma Vidya. Yeah, Yogya. So the one who is fit for Prachina Vidya, Prachina Vidya is Brahma Vidya. So he is addressing the student as saying, Hey, student, the person who is fit for this teaching, Iti Upasva, may you meditate in this particular manner. Iti Upasva, with this particular meaning, this Hiranyagarma Upasana is over. Before we go to the next Anuvaka, which is Anuvaka number 7, any questions so far? We have been talking basically about Upasanas only so far. This is the Karmakanda part, so Upasanas are being discussed. Are we clear on how we are progressing? Any doubt at all? Basically, there are only Upasanas, okay? But any doubt apart from that? Oh, my charity. Yes, Joan. Uh, so, in last class, uh, when we were studying the, the, and what is it? Um, Akasha, no. Yeah, as the body. Yes, we're in. Yes, when we were studying that, uh, the Akasha Sharira and Brahman yes. uh, phrase, you make a question, and I remember that Medaji answered that question, but uh, I don't remember what was the question that you asked. I asked saying that. Hiranyagarbha is basically subtle body. Yes. And Akasha is gross element. And therefore, how do you interpret? How can uh, you say subtle body has got, got a gross element? Mm -hmm. Meda replied, gross element. And then I said, in that case, you have the option of either saying that Hiranyagarbha is to be taken as Virat. Virat is Samashti Thula Sariram, right? The gross body of the universe. So you can take Iranagarbha here as Samashti Thula Sariram, or mm -hmm. better, you can say that Hiranyagarbha pervades the entire universe, and therefore whatever is all pervading has to be very subtle. And therefore, subtle like Akasha, Akasha, which is also all pervading. So that was the comparison. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Right. Um, okay. Uh, I want to ask 
with the Hiranyagarbha having extraordinary punyam yes. part. So, uh, so we have discussed before that devatas are nothing but the totality of whatever that aspect is. Yeah. And also, we have discussed that devata is a, a, a role. A, role. A post. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, some jiva who has some extraordinary punyam will be, yeah. say, find the post. And um, so, the but also we have said that that since it is a summation, like for example, Hiranyagarbha is just the totality of all the minds, yeah. and nothing more, nothing extra. Correct. But uh, but there is a jiva who has a punyam. Uh, okay, I get it. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but still, both <laughs> ideas are hard to reconcile. I was wondering when you will come up with this, you know. So, there is a jiva who essentially is the totality. He contains all the totality in himself. That jiva is being called Lord Brahmaji or Hiranyagarbha. I get your, you know, like because we tend to give an individuality. But this yeah. is not individual. This is that the samashti is itself being considered as an individual. When you take the samashti together, that is the Hiranyaka, that is the individual. And here, for this particular explanation, you are going to say that because of the extraordinary punyam only, Hiranyagarbha is born. Remember, Hiranyagarbha is born and dies. Right? Yes. It's not immortal. That's why. That's why it's taken as a jiva. But I understand what you are saying. It is not totally reconcilable. How this amashti can ever be born and ever die? So that is something which we accept as one of those mysteries in Shatram. That okay. didn't satisfy, satisfy you, right? No. <laughs> it didn't satisfy me also. Okay. But there is no real explanation to that contradiction. That how can the jiva be born when it is basically a samashti? You take it as, you know, figurative usage. Gauna prayoga. But good. I am happy to see the way your mind is working. Oh, my charity. Yes, John. So, when you ask us um, how the if, if Hiranyagarbha is a sum up of the totality of the individual minds, why the sadness of the individual minds doesn't touch him? Another explanation uh, besides the extra, extraordinary punyam that he has could be that he's he's also a, a jnani and and thus he knows he's establishing his own real nature and that in that way all this sadness from the individual minds doesn't touch him as well see the problem with these kind of explanations is that when you say he you are visualizing an individual when you say jnani there is no individual the very word jnani actually dismantles the individuality of a person. You cannot say I the individual and the jnani together. Jnani simply means Brahman. Do you see the dif difficulty in these concepts? Whenever you say I am a jnani, that, that, that sentence has no meaning. Whenever you say I am Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi, the sentence has no meaning. Because Brahman cannot say anything. Brahman doesn't have a mind. Jnani really speaking is Brahman alone. And therefore Jnani cannot talk at all. But Maybe it feels like one of those uh, Apuadha <laughs> moments happening because, <laughs> because till now in the past we have discussed that Ishwara uh, is not bound by Avarna Shakti of Maya and yeah. all those things. But I guess we are dismantling that idea now. Yeah, in fact, we are dismantling, slowly, slowly we will dismantle the idea that there is a creation at all. 
and when you <clears throat> when you say there is no creation then the word creator loses meaning right yeah so when we go to manduke you will find that god of pada starts with that that when there is no creation why are you saying there is a creator <laughs> we will leave you with that thought okay so arvind can we just uh, start off at anuvaka 7 maybe you can do the whole anuvaka and then we will talk about it yes om पृथिव्यंतरीक्षंदो वादिशा अग्निर्वायुरादिचंद्रमा नक्षत्र आप ओषधयो वन पत आकाश आत्मा भूत अथाध्यात्म प्राणो व्यानोपान उदान सन चक्षुश्रोत्र मनोवाक चर्म मगम तग्स्नावास्थिम्जाधिधाशिवोचत पांगदम सर्व पांगते नैव पांगतृणोती thank you <clears throat> okay so i'll just mute all of you all and then we'll discuss so there is a word called pangtum over here so pangtum means a group of five and this is also uh anuvaka which is discussing hiranya garva upasana undi saguna brahma upasana what is the difference in the anuvaka before the last hiranya garbha was invoked outside the mind in the last anuvaka hiranya garbha was invoked in our mind so three upasanas we have seen now we are dealing with the fourth upasana this is called a pankta brahma upasana and as before we will visualize the samashti upon the vyashti only but here it is present, presented very differently the universe jagat is divided into three groups each group having five items or five members and pankta basically means five so these groups having five members is called a pankta each group which has five members is called a pankta the universe is therefore divided into three groups of five members each each of these groups is a pankta there are three pankta's similarly the vyashti the individual jiva is divided into three pankta's of five members each so what do we have we have a samashti pankta trayam three pankta's of the samashti and we've got three pankta's of the vyashti remember pankam simply means a group with five members what is the upasana it is upon the aikyam of the oneness of the two of the two sets there is samashti and vyashti we are finally going to say that there is only aikyam of samashti and vyashti and this particular upasana is called pankta brahma upasana what are we to do we have to visualize the samashti pankam the three samashti pankams on the three vyashti pankams in other words we are going to visualize the universe in ourselves so totality is what nothing but brahma and hence this upasana is called pankta brahma upasana Now a question can come up: Why five? Why should Shruti divide the universe into five and the individual also into five? Now, the in Karma Kanda, for example, there are many Vedic rituals which are called Pankta. Okay, many of the rituals are named Pankta for one very simple reason: 
they need five factors for the ritual to be done. For the completion of the ritual, they need five pantha, they need five factors, the pantas. What are the five factors? They are very obvious. The first one is Yajamana. Yajamana is the ritualist, the grahastha who is doing the ritual. The second one is equally obvious, Yajamana Patni. So, Yajamana and his wife. They are two of the five. The third one is the Putraha, the child. The fourth item is called Daivi Vittam. Means divine wealth. And this is another, another name for the mantras which are being used in the Upasana. So, Yajamana, Yajamana Patni, Putraha, Daivi Vittam or Daivam Vittam and to do the ritual, you need money. So, also Manusham Vittam, worldly wealth is the five, fifth factor. And therefore, the five Pantams of any Vedic ritual, Yajamana, Yajamana Patni, Putraha, Daivam Vittam and Manusham Vittam. The divine wealth is taken as the mantras of the Vedas. And the worldly wealth is Manusham Vitta. Right. Now, based on these five, you have to look at the mantra. Mantra says, Prithivya Antariksham Dhyau Dishaha Avantara Dishaha. So if you look at the words, Prithivya, Prithavi, then Antariksham, then Dhau, then Dishaha, then Avantara Dishaha. These are the five constituents of the Samashti Pantam. Okay. The first group, the first Pantam, the first group is called Loka Pantam. This is a name. Each group is being a, given a name. The first group is called Loka Pantam. The Loka Pantam consists of Prithivi, that is Bhuloka, Antariksham, that is Bhuvaloka, Dhau. Dhau is Suvarloka and Dishaha. Dishaha means the four main directions. What are the four main directions? Everybody knows, but I thought I'll just ask. East, West, South, North. Right. And Antara Dishaha means the four subsidiary directions. What are they? In between, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. Okay. So, you got these five groups. Now, remember, out of the five, five parts of this first pantam, Rithvi, Antariksham, Tau. These are lokas, right? Bhuloka, Bhuvarloka, Sorvarloka. And the other two are directions, main direction and intermediate directions. Because the majority of the members, three out of five are lokas. This is called the loka pantam. Okay. Iti loka pantam, he says. This is the loka pantam. You can see? That's the first set. Then comes the second, second set. Agnihi, Vayuhu, Adityaha, Chandrama, Nakshatrani. This is the second pantam. Again, this is Samashti, right? This is not Vyashti as yet. Because there are three groups of Samashtis and three groups of Vyashtis. Each group has got five members. That is why they are called Pantams. So, the first group we have seen, Loka Pantam, having five members. The second group is Agnihi, Vayuhu, Adityaha, Chandrama, Nakshatrami. And Shankara in his commentary calls this group Devata Pantam. Why? Because all the members are Devatas. Agnihi, Vayuhu, Aditya, Chandrama, Nakshatrani. They are all Devatas. What is Agnihi? Agni Devata. Vayuhu, Vayu Devata. Aditya, Sun Devata, Surya Devata. Chandrama, Moon Devata. Nakshatrani, the Star Devatas. So it is called the Devata Pankam. That is the second Pankam. And then you have the third one. Which is Apaha, Oshadayoho, Manaspatayaha, Akashaha, and Atma. Now, here, Apaha is waters, 
ओषधया इस प्लांट्स वनस्पतया इस ट्रीज आकाशा इस स्पेस एंड देर इज आत्मा तो इट्स नॉट एज क्लियर एज द अदर वन तो वॉट डू वी से यू लुक एट आप आप वॉट एस यू लुक एट आकाशा स्पेस टू ऑफ द फाइव एलिमेंट्स ओषधया एंड वनस्पतया वॉट इज कॉमन देर both are from prithvi so you take oshadaya and vanaspataya together and say that is prithvi so we have got aap that is jalam prithvi akashaha and atma right so oshadaya and vanaspataya they refer to the prithvi since they are born from prithvi and shankara says here atma has to be taken as virat the entire thula prapancha because he says the other others which are referred to here are three of the four thula pancha mahabhutani and therefore by context the remaining one is also pancha mahabhutani what is the samashti of all this it is basically virat only therefore the adhikara the context for this meaning atma it is virat atma means virat and they are made of what all panchabhutani remember there are only four fifth one you have to supply so eti bhuta pantam all these are made of panchabhutani and they have got a name called bhuta pantam and shankara says or the rather shruti says itya adibhutam this is the adibhutam the bhuta pantam is the adibhutam and shankara in his commentary says you have to take this as representative upalakshanam for samashti and therefore when you say adibhutam it is not just bhuta pantam it is also loka pantam and devata pantam so all three have to be added together to give you adibhutam thereby completing the discussion on samashti pantha does it make sense see there is nothing very intellectual about this i am simply giving names and elements you have to just remember that the gnanam part doesn't come here at all it comes in the next valli ramananda valli here it is just upasana zolli so we are talking about the samashti pantham is over and if you look at the mantra it says atha adhyatmam okay adhyatmam means what individual so vyashti so samashti pantham has been taken care of and now we are going to look at the vyashti pantham so the pantha trayam the three groups of five each which are connected to the individual and the first pantham is called vayu pantham and he says here prano vyano pana udana samana prana vyana apana udana samana this is the panch pranas okay so it's called vayu pantam is very clear then comes the next one chakshu shrotram mano vak tvak and shankara gives the name indriya pantam the indriyas so chakshu shrotram mana vak tvak chakshu is eyes shrotram is ears mana is mind vak is speech and tvak is the organ of touch so these are the gnani indriyas shankara calls indriya pantam you have to remember that they are gnani indriya pantam and then there is a the third group the last group which is charma mamsa snava sita majja okay these are all constituent parts of the bodies so they come from ayurveda and they call they are called dhatu in ayurveda meaning the internal component of the body dhate iti dhatuh from the root dha which means to support these are the parts which sustain the body which support the body and charma charma means skin and 
not the outer skin it means the inner skin mamsam is the flesh nava nava is the muscle asthi is the bone majja means the bone marrow so these are the five charma inner skin mamsam flesh nava muscle asthi bone majja bone marrow and etad hi idam sarvam adhyatmam these three mantams 15 members in total is the adhyatmam the individual jiva and similarly bahya cha pantam eva the external world also has three pantams and then etat adividaya rishihi avochata iti iti means etat in this manner evam in this manner adividaya adividaya is visualizing so visualizing in this manner rishihi avochata avochata means said instructs so rishihi avochata the rishi instructs the students and shankara in his commentary very nicely adds rishihi you can take as the veda itself the veda itself says instructs the the, the disciples the devotees pangtam va idam sarvam everything in samashti sarvam samashti as well as vyashti pangtam va idam sarvam everything in samashti and vyashti can be classified as pangtam only and pangte naiva pangtam spranoti ti pangte naiva with the help of this vyashti pangtam of the three groups of five relating to the individual what should you do pangtam bahyam spranoti the samashti pangtam you should invoke on the vyashti pangtam and who should invoke the upasaka so spranoti has to be taken as purayati to be filled up so basically the vyashti has to be taken as the basis the substratum on which the samashti is being invoked in other words may you visualize the samashti pangtam three groups samashti pangtam means three groups you must say samashti pangta trayam may you visualize them by invoking them on the vyashti pangta trayam which means that you should do the aikyam upasana you have to visualize the samashti as on the vyashti which is saying that there should be no difference between the vyashti and the samashti in this manner you should visualize you should meditate okay remember this is not aikya gnanam you cannot say this is knowledge of the non difference this is upasana of the non difference it is a visualization like you visualize, visualize lord shiva on the shivalingam that is not understanding that lord shiva is not different from shivalingam that is a visualization it's a upasana and what is the advantage by visualizing the totality on the on the individual you will become stronger pranoti you will become strong and therefore this upasana is called pangta brahma upasana and remember like any upasana it can be practiced as sakama upasana upasana for a particular desire or you can practice as nishkama upasana also sakama upasana will give you what what uh, karma phalam drishta anybody else sakama upasana gives what karma phal heavens yes it gives punyam and that punyam gives whatever loka it is in this case remember the upasana is on hiranyagarbha and therefore the sakama upasana phalam is upasaka become hiranyagarbha post death while if you do the upasana as nishkama upasana 
the phalam is available in this life as what? Jnana. As Chitta Shuddhi. Right. Never forget, Upasana, Upasana does not give Moksha. Upasana does not give Jnana. Takama Upasana gives you the Phalam which is specified, specified in the Shastram. In this case, Shastram says Sakama Upasana or Hiranyagarbha gives you merger with Hiranyagarbha. Becomes, you become Hiranyagarbha post the death of your body. Nishkama Upasana gives you Chitta Shuddhi in life. Right? So, these are the Upasanas. And in the next class, we will go to Anuvaka number 8. Anuvaka number 8 is Omkara Upasana. So, with this Anuvaka number 7 is over. Any questions we can take? Oh, much I have a very ridiculous question. No question is ridiculous. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Just based on this last bit that you just said, that oh. post-death one becomes Hiranyagarbha, it doesn't mean displacing the, let's say, so-called Jiva Hiranyagarbha, but merging with. You can take it as that, or you can take it as post-death in the next cycle. When this Hiranyagarbha would have died. Which is a really, really long time. So what happens to... You will just hang around. <laughs> <laughs> Where? <laughs> really long time from the point of view of a Jeeva, right? Yeah. For a Hiranyagarbha, it is 100 years. So where is that waiting for this one who's who's waiting to displace the other one in the meantime? It, you'll, you'll just wait. <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing. Okay. So that time... And space, you know, actually when you talk about the heavens, right. they are also in a different time and space. Each loka is in a different time and space. So, right. 100 years for you may not be 100 years for, uh, you know, a different uh, loka. But so, so, the thing is that, see, the highest loka that one can go to is Brahma loka, which is, still, which is still Brahmaji's, Hiranyagarbha's realm. Correct, correct. And the, if that is where we're waiting, because the, that's the longest one place one can wait, but yeah. then that is the realm of this Hiranyagarbha who is about to perish. So, where is, you know, you know, I, there's a little bit of a time lag. There is a time lag. <laughs> long, long time <laughs> lag. No, no, not just that. It's not just yeah. the time lag, but the fact that yeah. the realm of that particular one has to also perish then, right? Yeah. Hiranyagarbha has to perish and then in the next cycle only, the number one on the waiting list will become Hiranyagarbha. <laughs> and if all, all of you, like Tanmai and Medha and all are in waiting list, you know, you're, no, you're no. Going to... Here no one's in the waiting list, thankfully. All, all of you are on the waiting list, I hope. No, no, none of us, sir. Okay, fine. Then, <laughs> then, then you don't want Sakama. Sakama karma is not there. Sakama upasana is not there. So then there's no waiting list, right? Okay. So, so it essentially indicates another cycle. Another cycle. Okay. I, so, I said that it's a ridiculous question. Please that that is why we say that we don't look upon Krama Mukti as a very viable option. It's we don't even in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna doesn't talk much about it. Very of few course. sentences yeah. there. A long discussion is there, Brahma Sutra, but that's at a later stage. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you for uh, <laughs> accommodating this question, Acharya. Thank you. Okay. Om Acharya Ji. Yes, John. Uh, the, there were three Vyashti Pangtam. Yes. Uh, Vayu Pangtam, Indriya Pangtam. What was the third one? The name of the third one, the last group? Uh, it's pretty fast. I forgot it. <laughs> I, I actually, I miss it in, in, when you mentioned it. <clears throat> okay, anybody wants to ask that question? What are the three pangtams? The three Vyashti pangtams. The third one is Dhatu pangtam. Uh -huh. Dhatu. Dhatu is the constituents of the body. Oh, yes. Charma, Magam, etc., etc. Thank you. So, incidentally, I hope you know that while Arvind chanted, he pronounces Magam. So, that Gum is a Vedic chant, Vedic form of pronouncing the Anuswara. It's Mamsam. Mamsam is flesh. 
that uh, raviji that gum adds because um after ma the syllable is sa uh, yeah so it is uh, the ushma varna sa sha sha ha any one yeah. of the four when they come uh, anuswara becomes gum in uh, one second just hold on yeah yeah bolo i'll be starting immediately yeah right ha huh. so as uh, arvin said there is a grammatical reason technical reason for the pronunciation but that's the vedic chanting only when you actually break it up it's just mamsam uh, acharya this what is the uh, difference between the uh, the muscle skin and the flesh i had a doubt charmam is the skin i understood mamsam yes. in a, mamsam is flesh and then snava snava is the muscle i mean they are clear and not um, clearly different in uh, anatomy muscle flesh bone marrow skin yes uh, i'm only uh, concerned about mamsam i thought mamsam is the uh, flesh mamsam is flesh which is different from muscle is that fat are we talking about uh, or no that's made made uh... asti is bone majja is bone marrow in mamsam is flesh this is the basic dhatus in ayurveda yes yes sapta dhatus so i'm only concerned about the difference between mamsam and snava snava is muscle i mean this is absolutely clear difference between flesh and muscle muscle gives you strength flesh is just there to fill up your body okay and one more question acharya so these uh, panchakams uh, on i didn't understand the, how this bifurcation happened the panchakam of devata panchakam agni and vayu are there yeah between aditya and chandrava and then other ones other prani ha a bhuta panchakam again has got the apaha so why four. is why there's got there? four over there all five are not there you have to supply the fifth one ha so why, why is that uh, separation with uh, that why not all the pan, all the panchmo but you can you can ask why not in a shruti you can say you can <laughs> try, try to answer what what it is but you should never ask why why doesn't use other words that you can't say okay very simple shruti is pramanam for us and if you can interpret it differently but you can never say that it should be different word should have been used because then you're saying that ishara made a mistake i was thinking um, maybe under the panchakam one of the panchakam will have all the panch mahabhutas no not necessary okay. five five elem five items have to be there you hmm. have to extrapolate is there any a uh, base for this such bifurcation like no there is no base at all shankara's commentary doesn't talk about the base he says this is the reason okay why it's called panchabhuta ka panchabhuta this thing why four of them are there so you have to supply the fifth one yeah the atma you talk about earth right earth because of of plants and uh, trees you put them together Okay, Ajay. Thank you. Okay, so with this, I'll close for the day. Thank you for your patience. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamada Ya Purnam Eva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Om Tat Sat Om Namah Shivaya. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.